Microservices, a modern architecture for building applications with the goal of speeding up development time and making apps easier to maintain. Without all the buzzwords, microservices are a bunch of independent apps working together to accomplish the goal of the application rather than one giant app trying to do everything. The benefits of this approach have led to microservices becoming the standard architecture for most tech companies. It means you need to have at least a basic understanding about these things if you want to maximize your career potential. To understand why microservices get so much hype, you need to understand the problems they solve. Traditionally, applications are built in a monolith style, one big service that handles every feature of the app. This works great for smaller applications, but as a company grows and continues adding more features and hires more engineers, major problems begin to emerge. Certain components may become choke points that slow down the entire app and make scaling inefficient. Onboarding new engineers becomes a challenge and release of new features slows down. These problems weren't unique to software design. In fact, most of this stuff was taken almost directly from traditional manufacturing, where they moved from hand building everything to assembly lines with specific jobs for each person on the assembly line. So what are the actual pros and cons of microservices? We get improved development speed by allowing teams to deploy on their own schedule. Only major external changes to the API need to be coordinated with other teams. Everything else is abstracted away. We get faster onboarding for new engineers. A new team member can start off with a single service and gradually learn more over time instead of having to learn the entire monolithic app before they can start contributing. Well-designed microservices are much easier to understand mentally compared to a giant tangled monolith. Teams can use the best tool for the job because each service is independent. For services that need a lot of speed, you can use a language like Golang or C. Your data science team can expose a machine learning model created using Python through an API, and your other teams can use that through their preferred language. This also applies to databases. Some services will work better with SQL or a NoSQL model, and the team can make that decision for whatever works best. By breaking the app into pieces, it makes scaling easier and more efficient. Some tasks may be CPU intensive, while others require lots of RAM. With a monolith, our only choice would be scaling the entire service horizontally and vertically. Using YouTube as an example, in a monolith, user uploads can slow down the entire app, even for people who are just trying to watch videos normally. By breaking the app into a microservice, we could scale user uploads independently and even use specialized hardware optimized for that task. In a monolith, a memory leak in one part of the system could bring down the entire thing. With a microservice, bugs are isolated and can be detected quickly and the release can be rolled back, which makes the entire application more resilient. They also allow for more experimentation. New microservices can test out new libraries, design styles, or even programming languages with less risk and then organically gain adoption throughout the company as other teams see that and start using that technology. All this doesn't mean that microservices are perfect. In fact, they can lead to major horror stories if you aren't careful. Probably designing a microservice architecture takes discipline, and if you don't do it right, you're gonna end up with a bigger mess than your monolith ever was. Most people recommend starting out as a monolith and then gradually breaking that down into pieces naturally over time. You're gonna need some guidelines in place. If you allow teams too much autonomy, you might end up with microservices written in five different programming languages and 20 different frameworks. And if those employees leave, you're screwed because you have nobody left to maintain them. Because microservices all run in their own process, which means they have to communicate over the network through some kind of API call. This leads to a whole new set of problems that need to be accounted for. This has been Microservices in 4 Minutes. Make more in-depth videos on microservices soon, and also more quick summary type videos like this, so be sure to like and subscribe.